Hello everyone and welcome to Monkeyfish channel. In today's video let's talk about the best and the worst advice for self-defense. I'm talking about just run. So many self-defense gurus and even more armchair experts like to say that just run is the best strategy for self-defense. And this sounds like pretty solid advice, but not always. I decided to do self-defense experiment and ask my friends for help. And I told them that they should try to keep this realistic and still kinda safe. And it ended up as always. In martial arts community, it's a lot of people who like to seem smart. And in all martial arts groups, it is always some guy who like to say, you should never fight, you should just run away. And the funny part is that probably most of those guys are not so good at running. And in my opinion, if just run is your only strategy, then please pause this video, take your clothes, and it's normal clothes, not uh, sports clothes, normal clothes. If you have heavy shoes, take your heavy shoes. If you have a big jacket, take your big jacket. Go outside and run full sprint 100, 100 or 200 meters and come back here and comment down below what did you felt after that and I know many of you are going to tell me that running away works for you and I do not saying that this is the best strategy because running away works for me too a few times in the past but let's talk about scenarios when this guy is much faster than you or is in better shape or when you're running away and you end up in the place with no escape or if you are in some neighborhood and this guy have some friend who's going to cut your way out and then you have to fight with two guys one which is a little bit tired and one which is completely fresh and you decide to run away because you could not fight this guy and now you have to fight this guy when you are completely exhausted let's talk about these scenarios okay let's talk about my self-defense experiment so i did three scenarios based on my experience or somebody who i know and those scenarios look quite similar but they are a little bit different so first in this scenario i have to run 100 meter sprint and just say that after this distance i cannot run away anymore it's some kind of wall fence or whatever then i'm turning back and i have to fight the guy who is fresh so i am exhausted he is fresh and yeah check it out i think this scenario was quite uh, interesting and i was thinking that i can do much better but right now my condition is garbage and after this sprint i could not breathe normally and when he started fighting me i was focused about you know breathing and surviving so it was mostly defense i could not attack him that well you know it was just you know wide swinging my arms and just try to cover myself you know i just tried to survive i was i was thinking that i can do better well, this scenario was based on my experience and in this story i was the bad guy it was typical Daniel LaRusso and Johnny situation. So this guy provoked me and I ended up as a bully. So he was a kid, I know kids fights looked a bit different. This guy pushed me and he spit on my shirt. And this made me angry. So I push him back and he starts running away. And I decided to run behind him. And I was much faster than him. So I was close, I kicked his leg. So he fell on his face on the ground. And I just come fast and just kick his butt as a symbolic win. You know, he was a kid, so it's a bit different. But in real life, this situation could end up really, really bad. So in the story, I was a bully, but not really. I am not self-defense guru, but in my personal opinion, if just run is your only card in your self-defense game, then you should start running. And I do not talking about long distance running because no one cares that you can run 10, 20 or 30 kilometers per day. You have to be faster and be in better shape than this guy behind you. So you have to do sprints and maybe train a little bit, parkour, you know, you don't have to be crazy parkour, you don't have to do any flips, just basics, you have to jump over some obstacles or, you know, something like this, because you should not expect that you are good in something when you never train it. So just be realistic. So 
scenario number two is quite similar. I have to run 100 meters, but my opponent going to run 40 meters. So this is like a symbolic that he is in better shape than me. So he's going to be a little bit tired, but less than me. And yeah, check it out. In the second scenario, I kind of knew how this can end up and it was pretty much the same like in the first one. After this, after this 100 meters run, I was so tired and when he started attacking me, I have to try to catch my breath and I was focused about defense. I know I should attack more, be more active, but in this moment, I was only focused about catching my breath and surviving. This scenario was based on the story of my friend and this was typical movie scenario. He was running away and he ended up in the place with no escape, so yeah. Okay, some of you are probably going to tell me that when you have to run for your life, then you can turn on your uh, adrenaline shot. And this is true, but you will not become the fastest man alive. You will not become the flash, just because you're a little bit scared. And you know, when you're scared, you have three different reactions. You can freeze, you can run, or you can fight. And if you are lucky enough, your adrenaline shot is going to hit the running part. And when you run, then you are not focused that much about anything around you, you just run. So you can trip, you can fall, you can end up in a place with no escape. And when you stop, then you are done because you use your all energy for running. And what about this guy? And the funny part is that this guy can also get a driving shot. And he has a much easier work than you. He don't have to think where he is running because he is just following you. You have to just get his target and his target is you. So think about this. Last scenario, I have to run again 100 meters sprint. My opponent have to run 40 meters and his friend have to cut my way. So I have to face two guys, one is completely fresh and one is a little bit tired, so wish me luck. The last scenario was crazy. I could not do anything, I could not breathe, I could not think about attacking him, I could not think about defense. I just cover myself and just try to survive, but yeah, it was really bad. It was crazy and really, really bad. And I don't have anything to say about it because it was so bad. Self defense instructors like to always assume that the bad guys are dumb. But it's not always like this. Sometimes they plan exactly everything. And this is what happened to me. This last scenario was based on my experience. It's not completely my story, but I am in it. And it's not completely the same, but you're going to see my point later. So, when I was a teenager, I was working back home with my friend, and this friend, he makes some enemies in different neighborhood. And one guy behind us, he was walking, I don't know, 10, maybe 20 meters behind us, start talking to us some weird stuff. We try to ignore him, because we don't want to make any problems, we just want to go home, because we are tired of the school. And it was winter, and this guy started throwing us some snowballs, but he wasn't good with that because no one got hit. And me and my friend, we get to some crossroads and we could decide we go main street when there's more people around, it's more safe, or shortcut, what we normally take. And it's more sketchy road. So we decide to choose this time the main street because it seemed more safe. And this was wrong decision. Because in the <laughs> first building, my friend was grabbing and put into the building and another guy pushed me out, so I was outside, he was inside, they closed the door and this guy behind me they grabbed me so I could not do anything. And this time I was small and skinny, so I'm still small and skinny, but I was small. And after a few minutes they let out my friend, it was two guys who was holding him and the boss was punching him. So he looks like a panda, he had two black eyes and actually I end up with nothing because I wasn't the target, I was just the guy with the guy. I was just pushed a few times around, maybe maybe somebody hit me, but I don't remember that it was something serious, for me at least. <laughs> yeah, but you can see the point that somebody can lure you to the place 
where he want you to be. So in my scenario, in this uh, self-defense experiment, it was that I was running, the guy behind me was running too, and somebody cut my road. So I end up in the place where I would not like to be, but they want me to be. So this could be in the real life scenario, it could be that you are running away in some neighborhood and this guy have a friends around and they see that that he need help to catch you so maybe they will help him you know this is something like this so i hope you see my point as i said in the beginning of the video just run is the best and the worst advice for self-defense there are scenarios where running away is the best option but there are also scenarios where running away can put you to the bigger danger so my advice for you if just run is your only strategy and you don't want to train any martial arts then probably you should start running maybe do some parkour or just go to the gym why go to the gym because if you're going to look strong fit or just confident then probably some random guy will not attack you because you have to remember bad guys are not dumb they will not pick the fight with somebody who looks stronger or bigger than them why they should risk that they're going to lose they're going to pick somebody who looks smaller or weaker this is how it is so basically be healthy and fit this will help you so i have nothing more to say and remember i am not self-defense guru i am not an expert i am just a hobbyist so Thank you for watching, see you next time.